Bart, who produced Villain, said to me, I've got this other script that's come my way uh, from one of the actors who's in Band of Brothers, Ross McCall. It's a prison film. I was like, oh. He sent it to me. <clears throat> I was blown away because it wasn't your normal prison film. It was very different. It was very, it was brutal. It was dark. It was horrible. But at heart, there was something in there that drew me to it. And I, I was also drawn to the, to the role. It was such a great role. Do you know what I mean? I thought, this is not a one-dimensional character. This is something I can really get me teeth into. You know, it's going to take a lot of prep, a lot of learning. But I, I think if I can get it right, it could be a really good part. Um, yeah. And that was that. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, he's obviously, um, he seems like a, you know, a tor kind of tormented soul, really. On, on, the, on the surface, he's is, is quite this violent man. But in the process of the film, we do see that more vulnerable side of him sort of coming yeah. out a little bit more. Yeah. I mean, how, how do you um, develop that kind of character? Well, it's, you know, it's in the material, it's in the writing. Um, it, it's just that, you know, the preparation, the whole thing of of preparing yourself as an actor and going on that journey, do you know what I mean? I'm thinking, right, certain scenes are not, it's not just going to be bravado of me giving it, you know, there's, you know, and those scenes, the, the, the semi-emotionally... The, the, as you said, the tortured soul, the turmoil. How do you get that across without saying that? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? To, yeah. to just to convey something that people pick up on in the film and go, oh, you know what? I feel you can tell that he's not. Um, and that's, that's, that's it's, it's just being prepared and, and learning the material and just thinking and, and, and acting, you know, but yeah um it's also it on the low. <laughs> <laughs> um obviously your character steve he's he's got a cellmate uh, called marcus young kid and he sort of takes him under his wing as well and you know finds himself yeah. protecting the kid from a beating a few times um was there that kind of fatherly bond between between the two of you behind the scenes as well considering you know he's an up-and-coming actor and you're quite you know established definitely definitely i talked to him i loved him he's a lovely kid really nice um very hard working concentrated everybody loved him um got his nut down he was always prepared um but he had a lovely quality about him Stephen. he just had that he just had that quality about him that i loved you know there was an innocence in there there was a I just think you you, you, you you buy him, you know what I mean? He's this this kid who's obviously grown up, he's involved with the gangs. And we I think the chemistry with me and him really worked well. I really did. Yeah, it, it does. It does convey on the screen quite well as well. Yeah. Um, and he obviously has his own demons as well, and it's, it's, it's his own mental health. Um, yeah. Is, yeah, that's that's put into, a, into the limelight. How important was it to be able to show that kind of that kind of story and that kind of life to, in prison, basically, instead of, you know, everybody thinks it's all yeah, hard. Massive, massive, hard. massive. Well, you know, it's a good question because that's one of the things that drew me to it. It's the fact of, you know, let's show the other side, you know, the tortured souls, the turmoil, the... the the claustrophobic, the monotonous, the repetitive, hour after hour, day after day, the mental health, the nuttiness, you know, trying to change, getting locked away, going to segregation, doing the wrong thing, doing the right thing, you know, and just, you know, I think that's why, you know, if you look at the character of Mackelson, he, he's, he's, if he's not doing anything, he's usually reading or he's trying to better himself psychologically, you know. Um, and that sort of drew me to the project, the fact that we was going to show this other side of prison, you know. Yeah. And also, I mean, the, the location as well. I mean, the, the, all of, I think all of the film, isn't it? It's in the, filmed in the prison cell. It's quite confined. Well, that was the main thing. 
the main thing that drew me to the project because Bart said to me, listen, he said, I'm doing this film with Stephen Graham. We're going to do it all in one shot. It's called Boiling Point. You know, I was like, oh, right, yeah, interesting. And he said, but this, I want to do it all in one room. I went, it's impossible. You can't. He said, I'm telling you, we're going to build it. We're going to take the walls out, the ceilings out, the floor out, the sides out, the doors out. We're going to do everything. And I've said this in prior interviews, you know, we were lucky to have Stefan Kupek, who is an amazing director of photography. We did a, in excess of 135 different setups, camera shots. Not one repeated shot is in that room. And that camera never leaves that room. But you watch the film and you never actually feel like it is. Yeah. Because Ross wanted that feeling of, he wanted you to be a prisoner. He wanted you to feel, we wanted you to feel uncomfortable watching the film. Yeah. You know, and... Um, Does that, I mean, it, being in that kind of confined space, even though, you know, you took off the, the ceiling and stuff, did that bring about any kind of challenges to the uh, performance? Oh, tell it was draining, absolutely draining. I mean, I was in every scene, so it was like, I, I drove myself there because no drivers. We had to minimise everything because it was shot in lockdown. Mm. So everyone's masked up. You're doing your testing. You're going there. You everyone's trapped in this thing with the cameras, the lights, the cables, actors, and we've all got our mask on. And then the mask come off, and then it's action act. You know, back on, and then you'd any opportunity me <laughs> to leave that room. They must have spent most of their time going, "Where the fuck? Where's Craig gone?" <laughs> in between shots and setups or mag changes or any lighting things i'd be out just to get a bit of air to get back in again it was um yeah i suppose it was challenging uh, but fun yeah i was gonna say i was suppose you know you probably would have had that experience being shut up during lockdown as well it gives you that kind oh, of true. Yeah, it was the worst yeah. <laughs> yeah. um yeah. So, I mean, with the numerous films under your belt, you know, and you've got enough insight, you know, to know kind of a little bit about prison life is like, how how true to life do you think that those scenes were, when, especially when it comes to the violence? I think they were very, very, very authentic because we set out and Ross set out. He spent a lot of time um, in American prisons in that, you know, an American system and then come over here and done a lot of research. But, you know, that's the thing with violence. It's quick, it's brutal, it's over. Do you know what I'm trying to say? And what yeah. we try to do with the violence in this film when it comes, is just make it real and very quick and horrible. Yeah. Um, and so I think we, it comes across, you know, yeah, it does. I mean, it's certainly got me off the idea of ever doing anything criminal. <laughs> <laughs> and um, but I don't think it's over gratuitous. It was shot in a very shot in a very stylized way. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And there's there's also um, there's a quite a lot of scenes of you know you, you you're not speaking but you're narrating what you're yeah. thinking as well. I mean, how how I mean, did you film that? Obviously, you film them separately. But how how easy is it to do a scene when you're not actually talking? Knowing how to um, that. What's yeah, I mean, I, I don't mind that. I mean, that's that's all part and parcel of acting. You know, you can you can tell a, 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 a you can a look can say a thousand words. Do you know what I'm trying to say? It's it's you can do so much with just a look, and I like that style because if you notice in the film at the beginning of the movie, I'm very much about the looks and don't really say a lot but as the film evolves um we get more into the heavy duty dialogue mm -hmm. um but no no that that, 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 that that's fine I, I, I love i love that stuff that style of filmmaking you know yeah i certainly know what you mean by the look because i've interviewed you before and you intimidated the hell out of me <laughs> <laughs> yeah never, i've never forgotten that <laughs> It's all uh, pretend, you know that. Oh, of course it is. <laughs> oh, well, okay, that's it for today. And thank you so much for your time, Craig. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Right. See you soon. Bye -bye. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.